Al Mosan Jamal and you watch Afghan news. The new U.S. ambassador to Afghanistan says the United States is not rushing to leave the country and cautions that what happens in the months ahead will have far reaching consequences across the globe. Ryan Crocker, the new top U.S. diplomat in Afghanistan, was sworn in on Monday at the U.S. Embassy in Kabul. Crocker says the U.S. left Afghanistan the wrong way in the early 1990s, which resulted in a civil war, the rise of the Taliban al Qaeda using Afghanistan as a sanctuary in the September 11th attacks. He also says the United States has no interest in permanent bases in Afghanistan, adding that he is confident that even after combat troops leave in 2014, the United States will be able to help prevent the Taliban from ever returning to power. Clash between anti-government militants and police left at least 11 people dead, including 10 insurgents and a policeman in Kandahar province, according to a press release of Kandahar's provincial administration on Monday. The press release added that the armed militants raided some checkpoints of border police in Shorabak and Registan districts late Sunday night and police resisted. As a result, 10 rebels and one police constable were killed. Two more policemen and sustained injuries in the firefight that lasted for a while, it further said. Taliban militants have not made any comments on the issue yet. NATO forces say that one of their helicopters has crashed in Israel, Afghanistan. Taliban insurgents claim to have shot the craft down. The International Military Coalition says in a statement that it is investigating the cause of Monday's crash, adding that rescue forces came under fire from insurgents but had safely moved all crew and passengers to a nearby base by early morning. Kunar Provincial Spokesman Safi Ullah Wasif Allah Wasif, he says the helicopter went down before dawn in Kunar's remote mountainous Chapadara district and that his report showed it was shot down by a rocket. Taliban Spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid said that troops were dropping out of the helicopter for an assault on the militant group when they shot the helicopter down. Fresh political and ethnic violence gripped Pakistan's commercial capital over the past three days, leaving up to 44 people dead and taking the death toll for July to 339. City police said Monday. Most of the weekend's casualties were reported in Karachi's eastern Malir, Landi, and adjoining areas. Naim Broka, a senior police official in Karachi's eastern era, said that they have identified the people and at least 200 police commandos will be dispatched to search and arrest them, adding that there was no clear reason for the latest bout of fighting. The city, home to more than 18 million people, has a long history of ethnic, religious and sectarian violence and local quarrels and political disputes can often explode into battles engulfing entire districts. The man charged with killing 93 people in a bombing and mass shooting in Norway has appeared before a judge in an Oslo court amid tight security on Monday. Anders Bering Breivik, 32, has admitted that he committed the attack and told police he acted alone after requests from prosecutors and police to close the arraignment. The judge barred the media and public from attending. Police have said they will not allow video or photographs to be taken of Breivik either on his way to court or inside. Breivik was arrested on under the country's terrorism laws but will not learn the actual charges against him until the investigation is concluded closer to his trial date. At least seven people were killed in a bomb blast outside government buildings in central Oslo on Friday and a further 86 were killed during the shooting on the island of Yotoya, where a Labour Party youth camp was being held. The attacks wounded at least 100 other people. A legal panel appointed by the King of Bahrain is starting its inquiry into a crackdown on protests that left more than 30 people dead earlier this year. Hamid bin Isa al Khalifa, who set up the fact finding mission following diplomatic pressure, said the panel is completely independent and consists of international experts. The panel will be headed by Sheriff Basioni, a US based legal professor and UN war crimes expert. The fact finding mission also includes lawyers from the United Kingdom, Iran, Kuwait, and Canada, who are said to have been given access to government files and all government agencies and officials.
Bashar al-Assad, Syria's president, has sacked the governor of, governor of the Fleshpoint province of Deir Azur. Two days after massive protests demanding his ousting were held in the oil-producing region, Samir Usman al-Sheikh, an officer in the intelligence apparatus, was asked to replace Hossein Arnos on Sunday while the Syrian army continued its crackdown in several towns. Arnos has now been asked to govern the small province of Qunayt west of Damascus on the border with the Golan Heights. Since the uprising against his regime began in March, Assad has also sacked the governors of the southern province of Dara and the provinces of Homs and Hama. Egypt's parliamentary elections, a crucial step in transitioning to civilian rule, will be held in November, according to Egyptian state media reports. In a meeting with reporters in Cairo on Saturday, Abdul Moiz Ahmad Ibrahim, the chief of the Higher Election Commission, said that the elections of both houses of the parliament will be held at the same time and fully supervised by judges. No exact date for the voting has been announced. The Election Commission was created on July 19th at a meeting of the Supreme Council of the armed forces where it was also announced that no international observers would be allowed to monitor the vote. The decision has been criticized by activists who say it raises questions about the transparency of the first elections after the toppling of former president Hosni Mubarak in February. And that Australia and Malaysia have signed a deal to send 800 asylum seekers in Australia to Malaysia in exchange for the resettlement of 4,000 refugees. The 4,000 refugees are to be resettled in Australia over a four-year period with that country bearing the cost of their transfer and settlement. Hisham Muddin Hussain, Malaysia's Interior Minister, and Chris Bowen, Australia's Immigration Minister, formally signed the deal at a Kuala Lumpur hotel on Monday. The 800 asylum seekers sent to Malaysia will be placed in a holding centre for six weeks before being allowed into the community, Hussain added. And that's all for now. Thanks for staying with us.